Right now we're gonna build a C4. Should be pretty quick. Uh, we've got the tools we need, just a driver and some Loctite, uh, some super glue, and some lube here in the middle. Okay, then we'll take our bar, stick it in here with a 440 hex standoff here. Oh, not put that in sideways. Already off of a good start. The hex standoff, not sideways. Put the bar in, hold it together. Tighten that down so it holds nice and tight. Actually, undo that again. Great start. Do a drop a Loctite. Oh, or a thread lock, not Loctite. Tighten that down. Cinch it. Then we'll do another one. We'll put the hex standoff in. bar in. Oops. Have a great time today. Put that in there. Wipe off that extra little thread lock. Okay, then the bar on top. It's going to be with the two uh, wider space holes in first. We'll do a 1032 lock nut. Put that in there. Use a 5 sixteenths. 5 16th screw into the top, tighten that down. Um, and depending on how your prints came out, this will be a little bit difficult. Next we'll do our rail with the uh, gap in the rail down first under the top. Now these came out a bit tight because people complain that they were too loose, but now I think they're too tight. So we're just gonna grab a little mallet and gently tap it in. So I'll just kind of tap, tap, kind of nice and gentle. I'm gonna do this on the floor so I don't smash my table. Tap, tap, tap. Once it's on there most of the way, I'll just push it down. Down to the bottom, and then I'll do the other two rail segments. So same thing, the gap in the rail goes on first. Give it a little tap, tap. Push it on. Then do the third. And then the front shroud. Oh, look at that, I'm missing a front shroud. I've got uh, four middle shrouds though. That's fun. Same thing with the other shrouds is the open part of the Picatinny, the open part of the rail goes on first. Give that a little tap. Okay, that's on. Then I'll do the shuttle, a little pump rip. Um, and I'll do a bar, two 1032 hex nuts, and then here I will again use, drop a Loctite on a 5 sixteenths, put that in, and then more Loctite on another 5 sixteenths, thread lock, not Loctite, flip it over, do the other side, Nut, nut. Five sixteenths. Five sixteenths thread lock. And then I will assemble my muzzle piece. Here I'm going to put three 440 hex standoffs. And I'll do three 440 screws. Tighten them just enough to cinch it down. Don't strip the print. Hold those 440 lock nuts in. Stand off.
Now I'm just gonna test it just to make sure my holes line up. And it looks like my hole is a little bit too far. Um, I mean, my bar was a little bit too short because my print came out a little bit too long because if I can see, I've got some prints here that didn't come out the, the, the perfect length. And so I'm gonna adjust that by loosening this. So you can see I've got like a, a 16th of play right there and that's why my bar didn't come out right. So when you set your bar into the upper magwell, you wanna make sure that you pull it out depending on your bar. If you use a Captain Slug spec bar and you have gaps in your rail, you wanna make sure you push the bar in when you do it to shorten the gap. So it's slightly adjustable, plus or minus a 16th. Um, so depending on how your prints came out, you should have some tolerance there to get it to work right. So I'm just gonna slide these rail segments down closer um, to the magwell, cinch that down, do that for the rest of them. Oops. And then if I put the muzzle back on, we'll see that it lines up perfect to that hole right there. So that's how you can adjust your length if your rails, or your prints come out a little different. Everybody's printer is a little different, so that leaves you some room to adjust. Then I'll do the muzzle, the loading end, into the muzzle piece. I'll do my 016 O-ring for the clamp, and then I will do my collet on top of that. Now, if you don't like the clamp method or find the clamp method is too loose, you can also optionally put a hex nut and a 5 16th screw into the muzzle. So uh, the hex nut goes inside the muzzle and the 5 16th screw goes in the bottom. And then that acts as a clamp where the screw goes into the barrel, holds it on much more securely, but it does damage the barrel a little bit. So we'll just do the O-ring method for now. Slide that barrel back in. Get lined up. Okay, well, there we go. And we want to set the barrel so that it's uh couple inches from the end and then we'll slide on our pump grip or our shuttle and then our muzzle and here you will have to make sure that when you put the muzzle on all the way the barrel then sits in the magwell um, if your barrel sticking out too far towards the magwell then you'll have to readjust your position of the barrel but we'll just do three 440s to secure the muzzle onto the bars so one on the top, one in the side, one on the other side. And then I'll set the barrel into the magwell, tighten that collet down nice and hard so the barrel doesn't move. Um, it'll move a little bit, especially if you get a jam, but if you tighten it really hard, it'll be okay. Then our muzzle two, I'll attach with three more 440s on the low torque setting. So I'll just do torque setting one. And again, I'll just tighten it down so it cinches down so I don't risk stripping it. Just like that. And then I'll do two more 440s on either side. And then I'll do my trench, which is just my orange piece and barrel kind of cover. The two 440s again on a low torque setting or just, you know, just tighten it down until the cinch is down because these don't have to hold on too much force. And then I'll do my ties, which just cover these screws on the side with 5 16 10 32. And here I'll do a, a higher torque setting because it's metal on metal. You could do Loctite on all those screws if you wanted to, but I haven't had them loosen up too often. Um, you, as long as you go through and make sure that your blaster, your screws are tightened regularly. Flip to the other side. Do the tens. Okay, here's where I'll, or I will set this aside. Ugh. And I'll do the lower magwell next on torque setting two. The medium torque, put a screw in this side, 440. And then I'll get my mag releases, your uh, your nerf, your N, and your talon, your T release, and I'll make sure that I can fit a 16 inch pin in the hole. If the hole's too tight, I'll usually just take a pin and I'll push it 
to make the hole a bit wider and then my pin usually fits just fine. So push that into the hole. This is just a little pick and then my pin should fit. And I'll take both releases, flip over my magwell and line those up like this. Get the pin in the holes. Oops. Slide those in, push the pin in with a pick, cap it with a 440. And then two medium extension springs or one inch extension springs. Um, Captain Slug designed this originally to use elastic cord, but the springs are typically more reliable. So I use those instead. Uh, next thing is I will assemble the RAM assembly. So you got your RAM front, RAM back. We'll put uh, the RAM front on the RAM core, put an O-ring onto the back of the RAM core. I will lube that O-ring. Then I'll install the RAM back, and then I'll put the RAM back into the RAM front with two 440s, again on a low torque setting because Captain Slug's prints were designed to come out a bit wide, which means your holes will come out a bit tight, um, and so you don't have to worry about it stripping, but uh, as far as tolerances go, uh, if you print the holes a little bit wider, you do have a higher risk of stripping the prints. So I'm going to use a low torque setting and tighten them down. So they cinch down. And I'll do a little bit tighter than that until I can feel the tightness that I want. Just tight enough that it holds together nice and tight, but not too tight that it strips. I will align the notch in the top of the RAM core horizontally so it lines up to the pockets on the RAM front. And then on the top and bottom of the RAM, make sure that RAM is inserted all the way. But then on top and bottom of the RAM front, I'll use two 440s to hold the RAM core in place. I'll tighten one just until it hits the RAM core and I can feel it hit right there. And then I'll do another one on the other side just until it hits. And then I'll tighten it a little more on both sides and that tightening should allow my RAM core to sit straight in the base. I'll do another o, uh, uh, O12 O-ring on the tip. Then I'll do two one two threes on the back, one for the seal. And the second one I'm going to loop on every other notch for the shock pad. Then I will lube the O12 O-ring on the front so it gets a nice seal at the barrel. Just a little bit of lube is all you need. And then I'll install that into my front assembly here. Put the bars in the pockets, slide the ram into the barrel and it should line up. Um, in case it doesn't, then you'll have to adjust it. So if we slide it together, it should fit Nice, and if you need to adjust it, you can, depending on your barrel. This barrel's a little tight, so I might fix that later. Um, then I'll torque setting of two, more 440s. Then here I will install my lower magwell with three more bars. Again, to get the spacing just right, I like to press these bars in to reduce any possible gaps I may have on the rear. Um, and you'll see that if you use different bars, you have a much different gap. So push these together. There you go. Then same on the top. You wanna to make sure that the holes line up on the bars. So sometimes you have to wiggle it and then it'll just be the first hole into the top. And the ones on the side, you wanna make sure that both holes in your bar go into the magwell and they line up. Okay, here I'll do my grip and plunger assembly. So, We'll set this blaster aside and get my grip part. First, I'll take one half of the grip, put it on my grip main with a 440 in the bottom, middle, 472. Then I'll do this grip B with the cutout facing to the back and down. 
and do another 440, torque setting two. Tighten it down just until it cinches, and then I'll do one 440 in the back. I'll tighten it down just until the screw kind of hits that bottom pocket and not go too far. Take off some of these little strings that came from the printer. Then I will take my elastic, and we usually send it with about eight inches of elastic, but you usually just use about six. Um, we'll tie a knot into one end. As close to the end as we can. Get it nice and tight. That'll be good enough. And then burn the end, make it look pretty. Burn the end, make it look pretty. And then we'll thread that into the sear. Now the hole in the sear can come out really small sometimes, so it might be kind of difficult unless you use our updated prints with a wider hole. Push it through, then go through the trigger, and then go through the grip. Then you can see how much extra string we actually have. If you're using an aluminum trigger or an aluminum sear, you would instead put a 440 into the back of the grip where we have added in a screw port. And then you would just loop your spring or another extension spring onto the sear, onto that screw. Um, but we'll just do the last cord for this one. Take another 16th pin, put it in the trigger. Should line up. Same thing as a mag release though, if the pin doesn't fit in the trigger, use a pick to make the hole wider. We'll just put that in. Nope. Missed that hole completely. And then we'll use our our nylon spacer for the sear, put that on the screw in the back of the grip, put the sear on top of that. Um, and then here I like to set my tension, now everything's in place, I'll just pull on the string a little bit, the elastic, and I'll tie a knot and keep that knot kind of close to the grip. And then feel that tension and it should be enough resistance where you've got a bit of a trigger pull um, and the sear resets, it doesn't have to be very tight. Um, personal preference, you can adjust it later. Then I will cut the end of that the excess of that elastic. So you can see we do have about two inches extra, so use about six inches. Then we'll burn the end to make it clean. Put the other half of the grip on, and I'm gonna take off again more of these little strings. And then same as the other side, a bunch of 440s, bottom middle top on the grip B, and then bottom to hold the sear in. Again, I'm just tightening down so it cinches together, don't, gotta, don't have to go more than that. Then I'll do the trigger guard with a 440 on either side. And then before I put the rest of it together, I'll do my plunger. I'll start by hammering or tapping in my long hex standoff into the top of the plunger. I'll do that on the floor. You hear it go in all the way then we'll take a 440 and assemble the two plunger halves together the torque on there one two three o-ring then i'll take my rubber grommet um, and what we actually send you in our kits is a 440 washer um, which goes onto the 440 screw which then goes through the grommet and that's because a lot of people have their grommet slide off without a washer because the screws are countersunk, which means they're not very great at holding things on. Um, so we'll give you a washer with that, or you could use a, a regular 440 screw that's not a flat head. Uh, but we'll just use a uh, screw, washer, and grommet combo. Put a drop of super glue on the plunger. That's to hold the screw in. Otherwise it is known to come out quite frequently. And then we will screw that in here. We'll try to keep the grommet um, evenly squished so it's not hanging off to one side. That just makes a, the prime a little smoother. And there you go. Then we'll put the rest of the assembly together by taking our grip, sliding it on the bottom. I'll lube one end of the plunger tube and then I will lubricate the grommet with that. I will insert the plunger o-ring into the lube, then I will switch sides so that way one end is lubed from the plunger, the other end will be lubed for the ram base, 
and I'll slide that into the back, into the ram base. Then we'll do our rail one and rail two segments. And like the front, we'll do the open part of the rail. See how it's uh, open there and closed there onto the top bar with both pieces. Then we'll do our, our stock piece, which we are missing in blue. Okay, that'll slide on. Depending on how our elephant's foot came out, um, you may need to tap it on or or deburr the elephant's foot. And that'll go around the sear. And then we'll do our rear stock piece for the C4. And then we'll do our front butt. Tap that on. This is where the whole alignment will be tricky. If you see mine, mine lined up just perfect. However, depending on the, the bar and how your prints came out, that might be a 16th off. So you can try to adjust the bars by pulling it, tightening it back down, or um, adjust your prints. And so all of our prints we've adjusted to work. Um, we found the original CS spec bars to be a bit too tight, and so the hole would be way too far to the left. Um, so we made some of our prints a bit longer in some places and took out some of the slop in the grip. Um, like I said, it's kind of hit and miss depending on how your prints came out. So if you're printing too spec, you should be fine. Um, but more on that, you can read about that other places. We'll do a 1032 hex nut in the bottom, and then we'll do a 1032 one and three quarter screw through the side. We'll tighten that down. You can see that lines up just nice. Um, and the grip has maybe a 32nd of a wobble, um, but that could be reduced by spacers or by reprinting parts um, or adjusting your bars. We'll do our springs, and this one's gonna use a K25, K301 combo to hit 300 FPS. And then the back butt and the rear butt will be assembled together. First, we'll put a lock nut into the top of the back butt, push that down, and then a 1032 longer screw in the back. That'll act as our spring post. And then we'll do a butt plate with, again, another screw and another 1032 in the front with the screw in the back. And then we'll put this assembly together. Do a takedown pin all the way through. A little push. And the second one. And then finally, the mag adapter with the 316th. Don't want to drill too much or you could melt the prints or make the hole too big, but there we go. Smooth. Except for the barrel is kind of cinching a little bit. There you go. Default air seal. Got a good, decent air seal there. And we're good.